Mr. Chairman, board members, and Dr. Bowles, as you already know, I submitted a list of questions and documentation to the board on January 13th. The purpose of my questions was to separate fact from fiction regarding any rumors and allegations circulating throughout the county regarding the board and CCS administration. I received a letter from Dr. Bowles last Friday regarding my request. <coughs> Dr. Bowles indicated that responding to each of my questions would entail substantial staff time and that many of my questions seek information that the board is not obligated to provide. <coughs> According to the letter, the board was not responding to my questions because I did not ask for specific public records. The response letter went on to provide several sections of public documents. No attempts were made to answer my questions directly. Most of the questions were completely ignored. I had to search through the documents to find some of the answers on the home. That's no problem, I can do my own research. I do find it interesting that some of the documents provided bring even more embarrassment to the school system. The first question I asked was about how many cell phones are provided by CCS to bus drivers and employees and how much the monthly cell phone expense is. I was provided a list of cell phones and there's 328 in case anyone's wondering and a copy of two Verizon wireless invoices. Both of the Verizon wireless bills were past due. Why can't the school system pay its bills on time? It's an embarrassment to the school, school system and the taxpayers of Cleveland County. As best I can tell, Cleveland County Schools is spending an average of $8,200 per month, or almost $99,000 a year, on cell phones. During one of the candidate forums last fall, the incumbents told the attendees to let the board know if there were any issues that needed to be addressed. We were told the board could not do anything about a problem that they didn't know about. You don't allow time for open questions during board meetings and individual board members can't act on their own, so I submitted my request in writing. Apparently you guys have misunderstood my request. Although I asked for some public records, the primary purpose of my questions was why. I wanted to know the reasoning behind certain actions and expenditures that are taken by the board and CCS personnel. I don't know who came up with the, with the response approach that was sent to me, Mike Franklin came across as arrogant and insulting. This is not my first board meeting. I've only missed one in the last six months since August. Seems to me like that should earn enough respect to get a few questions answered, whether they're public record requests or not. I'm here again tonight asking if the board would like more time to respond to my questions, or should I consider Dr. Boyle's letter your final answer? Seems like you guys would like to get this out in the open so we can all move forward. So that is an open question. Should I expect more information coming, or is that it? I don't know. Our response is to thank you. We you have participated. We take into consideration your comments. Go forward. Okay. I would like to have uh, all the information that I've supplied in your response entered into the meeting minutes. Board for I have a copy of my Thank you. On next to uh, this time, the uh, adoption of our agenda.